top, Lewis. BK from the ah. parking lot. Spencer Johnson, four, three. Rob Jay's game in one word. Kuznar going strong with the left hand. Amazing. Kuznar is back in one to help Percy. He's an amazing player. He does everything. Stolen away Kuznar. Oh, what do you got for us now? Surprising. Athletic. You do it right there. 18. I want to say it's uh, kind of smooth, you know. Kuznar oh, takes him all through the hole. <laughs> they like a little shake and bake a little bit here and there. Here's Kuznar. Oh, Jay weaves through the defense. He really thinks he's Reggie Miller. Bad thing, bad idea. No, but he loves Reggie Miller. That's why he shoots so many threes. I'm telling him I said that. No, but, uh, he has a nice game, I really like his game. He's really explosive and athletic, so I like Jay's game. Jay is so low key. The thing I'll miss and, and I always remember about Jay is his sense of humor. Uh, he's ornery. Uh, and he's, he's, he's got a, a sense of humor that uh, if you didn't really know him, that you wouldn't understand. But uh, he, he's a funny guy. You know, he's, uh, uh, you know, like in practices, coach will say something. And, you know, Jay would, would repeat it just like Coach says it. And I don't know if Coach Brown realized it or not, but it's hilarious. More than anything else, just visiting with him, talking about what it was like for him at Evansville, how he felt as a person, as, as a human being, and how he feels now in terms of having a lot more confidence, having fun again with basketball. So, I mean, just visiting with him where they, things are now as compared to probably where early on in his career, that's the, that's the biggest satisfaction for myself. Explosive. That kid is all around explosive. I've never seen a person hang in the air as long as Jay Cousinard does. I mean, I've been around sports and athletics for a long time, and, and Cousinard, he can get up in the air and he stays up there a long time. And I mean, when he, when he jams that thing, when he slam dunks at home, I mean, he brings down the floor. So, I mean, he's just an all around explosive athlete. Jay on the court obviously is ultimately explosive, athletic, get up in a hurry, uh, is a great leader off the court. Uh, I would say explosive personality, funny, outgoing, um, and is also a great leader off the court as well. Jay Kuznard, go-to guy. You know, want him, want him to have the ball. I feel like when Jay takes it to the hole, he's going to make it every time. You know, it's just a matter of him getting in there, doing his thing, because <laughs> he gets up there, man, he's unstoppable. He's like water. You know, water will always find a crack. And this year, Jay has been, been able to do that defense send one, two, three guys at him and he's still able to find his way and make a play. And he's very, very smooth. He is very smooth on the court with everything he does. I mean, the, the, the sky's the limit for his potential still. He still hadn't reached where he could be, but uh, everything he does is just with grace and smoothness. And uh, He's one of those guys that just looks like he's going in slow motion and he's really going faster than everybody else. The way he's being able to, 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 to fight back here after sitting out a year and come back to be, if not the best player, one of the best players in the conference, I couldn't be more uh, proud for him personally. Stolen away Kuznar. Oh, what do you got for us now? If I had to describe BK in one word, it would have to be two words, I guess. It'd have to be old school. Bakari Lewis from the parking lot. The game would be just uh, silky, just silky smooth, kind of old school a little bit. Because B has this kind of slow old man mentality. Bakari Lewis for three. Oh, no! Bakari in front of the pitch. Smooth. Smooth. He's got that 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 voice that's kind of like a jazz musician, you know, with Marcellus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Bakari Lewis will try his own three and score it. 
He reminded me so much of myself and, and so much like, a, I guess, an old school player. You know, he always got his socks pulled high, got to got a little small fro, pat it down. Sometimes he got the mohawk. Up top, Lewis. BK from the parking lot. You know, Bakari, there's nothing out there that he can't do. Like, he likes to pick everyone up when they're down, you know, he just, he just a leader. That guy is, he's always confidence. Yeah, he's like the guy you want to give the ball to when the game is on the line. Fearless, I would say. You know, when the game's on the line, he, he's the guy that wants the ball in his hands. Um, you know, the thing about BK, when something's going to happen. It might not always be good, it might not always be bad, um, but you know something's going to happen with BK, and those are guys that are fun to, to have on your team because they're not afraid to make a mistake, and he's certainly not. You know, he'll just move on to the, to the next play. Clutch. BK is clutch. I feel like he, uh, the, la the last shot of the game, or when the, when the shot clock's running down, BK was always the one that knocked that shot down, the crazy shot. BK is like, He's like a rebel, you know what I'm saying? He, he do what he want. It's, it's cool though because he has that mentality to do it, you know what I'm saying? Not too many people can just go about things the way BK do, and that's, that's what's so cool about him. This guy BK is a leader. He definitely he leads, he's more, uh, he leads more with his play than I guess his words. He's really, he's quiet, you know, but he doesn't like to waste words, but when he does have something to say, it's definitely important. I think everybody respects his opinion and what he has to bring to the team. Uh, he's done a great job with that, too. He's bought in exactly what I'm asking him to do. I think I'll give him a lot more wiggle room here, too, and he's become the point guard I've been looking for there, too. So, you know, I think he and I have become much closer off the floor, too, in terms of uh, people and things like that. I think that's why we're winning basketball games. So, to answer your original question, I don't have one word. I'm just so happy for him, too. I think McCarr's matured a lot. Probably perseverance would be with him. I mean, he's been up and down, coach's doghouse, and transferring, and being at another school, and coming in, and having to sit out a semester, and being thrown in, and all these different things. But he's always persevered. He's always made it through, even the tough times when maybe he wanted to quit. Uh, but he never did because I think he still he believed in what we were doing deep down, and um, he just stuck with it. BK, it's probably when. <laughs> I think when we were at K-State, and uh, I think it was that whole game, you know, he was talking about, I'm feeling a little bouncy today, I'm feeling a little bouncy today, and we was like, BK, you can't dunk, you can't dunk, and he like, I'm telling you, I'm feeling a little bouncy today, and he, I think he, he like, kind of rattled a dunk in during warm-ups, and then, you know, uh, it was getting near the end of the game, and spent, uh, BK went and got a steal at half court, and when he just went in there, he dunked it real hard, and then he started yelling, screaming at the bench and stuff like that. I was, I thought that was pretty funny because the whole game was like, BK, you can't dunk, you can't dunk. And he went and flushed one during the game. It was pretty tight. <laughs> My top memory of BK, it might be last game when he had uh, when he had eight assists in the first half. That was that was pretty incredible. In the second half, I think I told him no, if he that he should try and go for a triple double because he had he had like I don't know, four rebounds, whatever, 15 points, eight assists, like the half. And I'm like, you might as well go for triple double. And so he comes out, you know, trying to force it a little bit. And I was just like, you know what? Never mind. Let's just go back, just go back to playing your game how you were playing before. And uh, then we came out with a good victory. But that's probably my best memory of BK. He was like, because he told me before the game, he's like, man, I'm going for a trip. I'm going to try and go for a triple double tonight. And he, he almost had it. So I give a lot of credit to him for that. On the court, BK doesn't get too high. BK doesn't get too low. He's very even keeled. He's smooth in his game because he knows his limits, but he's also not afraid to take a shot, to take a big shot. As you know, he's hit many big shots, especially last year and into this year. Um, as I watch his demeanor in crunch time, whether we're up 20, down 20, his demeanor is the same. There's a negative connotation to this, but uh, I mean it entirely positively. Um, Kari is questioning. Bakari doesn't take anything at face value. He wants to know what's behind, what's being told to him. Um, sometimes that, that causes a little bit of friction with the coaching staff. Um, but at the same time, it gives Bakari the ability to fight when maybe he's the underdog. And there have been some games this year where maybe the rest of the team was a little bit hesitant. Uh, maybe they were a little intimidated. And Bakari was just... I mean, he, he was at his best in those situations because he was a little bit questioning, he was a little bit defiant as to what every, everybody else expected of him. Um, 
think that'll serve him as he goes out in society because there's there's a lot of good and there's a lot of bad being preached. But Bakari's not going to take anything at face value. He's going to question, he's going to get to the bottom of things, and he's going to be able to make good decisions because of that. BK crazy. That's what it's called. BK is crazy. But he outspoken, so I mean, he speak his mind, whatever. Only mind he's gonna, he gonna tell you. He ain't scared to tell you the real, so that's what I like about BK. Up top, BK for three. Spencer Johnson has to be overachiever, man. If you have to put the word overachiever in the dictionary, you have to put his picture beside it. I mean, because he defies the odds on everything, you know. Anything you tell Spencer Johnson he cannot do, he's going to go out and do it twice as better. I don't know how he does it, but it's, I mean, he's, I think I'm more athletic than he is, but the way he's, I, I don't know how he does it. It's great. I mean, he's a great reader. Obviously, he got the school record now. I don't know how tall he is. 6'5 and all-time re rebounder. Just, uh, you know, never is denied and always, I don't know how he I don't know how he snatches every rebound. He's probably about six three and a half. <laughs> Spencer Johnson is six four and a half. <laughs> Despite what all the programs and everything say he's six four and a half. So yeah. But I mean he plays like a giant. You would not be able to tell on, on the basketball court. Spencer's at six foot four. Okay. They list him as six six, but I'll give him six four. You know what, six five at best, maybe six five and a half. If you're if you're stretching him. Can't jump over a freaking uh, telephone book. But the guy gets 700 rebounds in a career. The guy's 6'4", jumps probably as high as I do. Sorry, Spence, but uh, it's not very high. If we had every guy on our team like Spence with his strong will, uh, you know, our record may, we may be undefeated. And, you know, I'm, I'm not exaggerating when I say that. I really do feel that way. Spencer Johnson, four, three. I don't remember what game it was. We went in overtime, and I just remember looking at Spence when we were in overtime. And I knew that Spence wasn't going to let us lose that game, you know. He was just, he had that look in his eye and he was just talking to everybody. And I just remember he, he I felt like he won us that game. That was my favorite memory. You know, as a freshman, he came in as a skinny kid from, from Champaign, Illinois. You know, that's the kid that I met when I, when I first got down here. And I just remember, I was like, man, we, we got a long way to go, man. But if you see him today, you say you see Spencer the man, and he's a, he's a grown man, and, and everybody who steps on the basketball court who faces him, they 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 will tell you the same thing that they playing against a grown man. Think about where he was as a freshman, averaging one point a game, uh, could barely walk and chew gum at the same time. All he did was turn over the basketball, and to think about now being uh, probably a first team All League player is a is a great satisfa satisfaction for myself. Just thinking back as a freshman, how. How, how, how he struggled so, like he couldn't even catch the ball on the wing, he could dribble, uh, he never even scored a basket at Municipal his whole freshman year, so that was a big joke his sophomore year, was like, I just need to score a basket at Municipal, and now we're talking about, you know, uh, being a close to a thousand point score, if not already, and then all the rebounds he's gotten, obviously, um, it's just, the progression probably is the biggest memory I'm going to remember him by is when he came as a freshman and how where he is today and, and it's all about effort, all about effort. Um, he's not about the glory, he's not about himself, he's about his team. Um, you know, Spence has come a long, long way from day one. Um, looking at, you know, his rebounding total from his freshman year and then having him coming to be the all-time leader rebounder is just, is amazing. Well, it's a lot more fun to coach guys like him that want to be successful and, and you don't have to beg them to play hard and that sort of thing. So uh, I guess the important thing from a coaching standpoint is get kids like Spencer uh, that you don't have to prod with attitude and effort and, and that sort of thing to get them to play and just, you know, you know you're, you know you're going to get a great effort from him every night then it's just a matter of, you know, putting in a game plan or, or, you know, that sort of thing. You don't have to beg him to play. Guys like Spence from a coaching standpoint, it teaches you never to give up on what you have. Uh, you know, not, we as coaches are teachers first and foremost, and Spence has the burning desire to win and a burning desire to get better. That as a coach, it, it, it keeps you going, it rejuvenates you, it keeps you excited about what you have, and uh, it makes you want to encourage him even more, you know, because of the fact you see all those characteristics, all those features that he has about himself. He had a tremendous work ethic, you know, you can pick up things from Spencer as far as, you know, how to approach the game and how to practice and just just seeing how he works, you know, because Spencer, you know, he's not the tallest big man in the world, but 
you can tell from the, how hard he plays and how hard he works that he could he matches up with anyone in the country. He's just a great player. I'm very, very appreciative of the fact that he stuck with me. You know, a lot of young men have left the program for different reasons, for style of play, for maybe not necessarily agreeing with myself for how I do things here, but the fact that he stuck with me and we're able to win basketball games is even more satisfying than, than he'll ever imagine. You know, on the floor, there's nobody meaner. And off the floor, uh, he's that special kind of athlete who can be everybody's worst nightmare inside the black lines, and he can be everybody's best friend outside the black lines. Special individual. Uh, he doesn't have the most natural, the biggest abilities in the world, but the way he, he brings his energy and effort every single day, whether we're a practice or a game or playing KU or playing a Division II school, uh, he's consistent every single day. So I, I couldn't be more proud of him. Spencer Johnson for three. Out.